Graham, how important has Farage been in the rise of populist or nationalist politics in the West? Well, I think he's uh, remarkably important because he's, he's uh, not exactly the, the, the normal guy you, you see in these situations. He didn't just do well in Britain. This is a bloke who has inspired people throughout Europe and it obviously has had a big effect in America. Now, how many individuals can you think of, Andrew, in your time can say that about, uh, about their careers? Not too many. Well, particularly, Graham, when he didn't even get elected to the uh, British Parliament. Uh, so I think that's, that's uh, incredible. Um, Kerry, in his speech, Farage said what I think is a quite important thing. There is a battle going on in the West and elsewhere. It's globalism against populism. Mm. And you may loathe populism, but I tell you a funny thing, it's becoming very popular. <laughs> now, Kerry... Is populism, which has a bad name, in fact just another word for democracy, giving the public a say? Well, I think those who would support Farage and particularly that use of that word would agree with that, that it is a, an opportunity to talk about democracy. I think the really interesting thing about what he's done is he's actually made people think about what they want, you know, what they want from government, why they want their governments to be held accountable. And I mean, you know, the, the whole of the Brexit vote and the, then the subsequent vote for the Conservatives um, in the last election was, in fact, what Farage has been calling for. If you vote for... If we vote for something, then you, the government, should be doing it. And what he managed to do at the last election for the Conservatives was reinforce that in every which way. So I think... Um, I think it was very intriguing that, you know, that he left in the way that he did. I actually thought it was pretty hypocritical that they cut him off. I thought that was kind of bizarre, <laughs> um, particularly, as you said, they were waving... The... But then, you know, three minutes later, they're all linking arms and singing Old Lang Syne, and they didn't stop that. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. They should have just let him have his moment in the sun because he was on the way out. But, Graham, as a man uh, traditionally of the left, how do you regard this... Like I say, it's, it's decried as populism, but for others of us, uh, and including my Marxist, you know, Marxist friend of mine, this is in fact smashing through some of the consensus of the elite to give the public a say. And we've seen that, for instance, in Britain leaving the European Union and the rise of Donald Trump, etc., etc. Do you think this is healthy or does it worry you? Well, populism has its basis in the word people. And it seems to me that if you're doing what the people want, it's not such a bad thing. I would have thought democracy is about that. Democracy is not about you making up your mind to do something and passing a vote of no confidence in the electorate. That doesn't help much. What it's really about is, is the electorate itself deciding what should happen. As far as I'm concerned, I think Farage has made a very important contribution on that. Now, I don't agree with him on all these politics, for obvious reasons, but there's no doubt about it. Um, I think he has opened a door here and made people have a look at a system which, in the end, often doesn't reflect what people want, but reflects what elites want. And I think he's uh, legitimised, to some extent, the idea that you can be a nationalist, small n, mm. love your country, want an independence, without uh, actually being a jackboot Nazi walking up and down the street. Um, Kerry, Australian voters will, by next year, we're told today, get a say in something else that the elite have pushed mm -hmm. for years. You've got Indigenous Australians Minister Ken Wyatt saying, uh, we'll get a referendum to decide whether to have constitutional recognition of Indigenous Australians. Put that in our most fundamental law. Is that a good idea? I think this is the best way to go about getting Indigenous recognition in the Constitution, to actually have that as the question, because my view is that overwhelmingly Australians will vote for the concept of Indigenous recognition in the Constitution. That is not a referendum question which I think most people will have a problem looking at, thinking about and deciding, yes, I want to vote yes. What is more problematic is the question of the voice and how the voice would be implemented. And if you were going to put that into the Constitution, then you need to be very, very clear about what the voice would be. Now, listen, I was listening to a couple of uh, your favourite friends, Warren Mundine and Jacinta Price, the other day, and they were all... They agreed that the discussion around the voice is going to take a considerable period of time. 
um, for one very strong reason. There is not consensus among the Indigenous community about what that would look like. So if what we want to do as a nation is acknowledge our past, acknowledge our, our original peoples, then having them included in the Constitution, recognised by our Constitution, is certainly, I think, a very important step. And I'm prepared to have a bet with you that that will be overwhelmingly endorsed by Australians. I'll take you up on that. Graham. <laughs> uh, uh, there's some reasons uh, to worry about this for a couple of reasons. One is I think it's a racist proposal to start dividing us by race in our most basic law. That will have consequences. But in principle, I think it's wrong. But more this, I think, um, we don't even know what this constitutional recognition looks like, right? It had no proposal for what it would look like has been put to us. And I wonder if putting it so quickly to, the, to Australians, and I think it will go down, will actually end up dividing people and giving some activists the uh, excuses they see Australia's racist, they don't even want to recognise Indigenous Australians. Your if, view? If the general question is put up, i.e. Uh, we want some sort of recognition, um, then I don't think that'll pass. Because I think when it comes to the Constitution, people are going to say, well, hang on, I'd like to see the exact words. Mm -hmm. If you're going to change the document upon which our our freedoms are based. Well, hang on, I want to see exactly what that change is. And I think that would be the position I'd take. I don't like mm. the idea of just giving somebody a blank cheque to go and write something later. I would like to, to, to sit down and, and, and actually examine the words because these words, as you realise, Andrew, are going to be critical. And I'm not prepared to just give anyone a carte blanche and say, you go and do it. I would, be really, I would be really surprised, Andrew, if the question was mm. not clearly put. I mean, you know, we, if anything, we've learnt from the Republican debate, which is you know, long gone, and the, there the question, because the people didn't know what they were voting for, you know, the default position in Australia on referenda, if you don't know what you're voting for, you're going to vote no. I don't think Minister Wyatt would be that silly. I am absolutely convinced that what we will be asked to vote on will be, in fact, the wording in the Constitution and how it impacts on the Constitution and, every, and how the Constitution is interpreted. Oh, well, look, I suspect you're right, but my point is that it's put a timeline of no more than a year and a half from now, and we don't have even wording in front of us, and I don't think we're even close to getting that wording. There'll be a huge debate, a fight, a brawl, etc., etc. I don't think the time will suit the government on this at all, and I think it'll blow up in its face.